is the Dominican Republic being overrun by foreigners? Plus, how do you open a bank account here? What about paying taxes or incurring debt living here when all your stuff is up there? It's AMA Friday, everybody. Ask me anything, I'm answering your questions. Let's dive in. What's going on, everybody? My name is Jamie Gruber. I quit my high-paying job back in the United States in 2021, and a year later, me and my family decided to move to the Dominican Republic, and I share all of my experiences here, whether it's how to move, the expenses, real estate, and everything in between with all of you. And every Friday, from here on out, I'm doing an Ask Me Anything. I grab questions either from my Instagram account, my TikTok, or your questions down in the comments. So drop a question below and I might answer it on the next AMA. And I've got a bunch of them today, so we're gonna dive right in. But listen, before I do, I have one request. Hit the subscribe button, huh? Do you know that 74% of people watching aren't subscribed? Man, if you're willing to, it's appreciated. Let's get at it. At Will Dawkins, 1336 says, great content. Thank you, Will. Can you talk about opening a local bank account, US dollars versus pesos? Sure, here's my experience. We went to our bank, which was Scotiabank, and they provided us with a list of things that we would need to provide them in order to open an account. That list included our last two years tax returns, proof of employment or proof of a contract where I make income. That was in the form of like a letter from a client, our US passports, six month bank statements, our firstborn and a partridge in a pear tree. It was a whole bunch of stuff. And the whole process after we accumulated all that took us over an hour at the bank. Listen, you go to the bank, it's a 90 minute ordeal, even if you're just there to say hi to somebody, just the Dominican. But anyway, very quickly, they opened our account. We have one in pesos, one in dollars. We chose that while at the bank. That happened in Spanish, my wife and the guy, da 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 da. So I don't even know what was said, but essentially, that's what happened. Now, from what I understand, you can do that at all banks, and even I think at banks like Bandra Service, you can open with just your set. It's supposed to be very, very easy. But that is how you open a bank account, plain and simple. Question from at user-yz7gx9id9z. Oh, I know this guy. Hello, Jamie. As always, love your content videos. Question, would you recommend a real estate attorney in Punta Cana? If so, can you provide them, please? Thanks. It's for a closing on a condo. Here's my offer to anybody looking for a vetted realtor and or a vetted attorney here in Punta Cana. There's a link down below. Click on it. It's a Google form. Fill out your information. It's not much. It'll take you a minute. But with that, I can do my best to recommend for you who you might need. This is a question I've been getting a ton of. So I went out and I decided I'm going to meet people that I work with, that I trust, that know the market, that know what they're doing. And I'll share those with you. But I need to control the quality. So I need you to do that form so that I know who you're connected with, and we can follow up with those people to make sure you're getting the service that you deserve. The link's right below. Just tap on it, fill it out, and we'll go from there. Question from at Capilla Antigua, 1504. Did your wife vote? For those of you that don't know, my wife is Dominican. She was born in Igwe. She lived here to about the age of 12, came back after college for a year before going back to the States, which is where I met her, up in Boston. And we've been married now almost 14 years, together 15. It was really cool. My wife got the chance to vote for the first time as an adult or as a citizen of the Dominican Republic. She's never lived here during a voting year. So she got a chance to go in and have that whole experience. People are going to ask, oh, who'd she vote for? That's irrelevant. That's none of my business, nor is it anybody's other than my wife's. But it was a cool experience nonetheless. Some things we learned, voting location are on the back of your cedula. So if you're going to vote, it's listed right there where you need to go. The images of the candidates are right on the ballot, which was really interesting to me. We actually saw a guy that my wife was like, oh, that guy was running for office. I didn't like him, so I didn't vote for him. Like, how did you know in the voting booth? She's like, oh, his picture was there. Pretty cool. Three, she had multiple people checking her in. We think like different parties had to confirm who was coming in, like a really cool system of checks and balances at the booth. Four, it looks like everything's paper. There's no electronic counting, it's all paper counting. Maybe that's wrong, somebody can let me know in the comments. And five, and this is the biggie, identification is required. Dominican issues said to us to everybody. In the states, there's all these states that say, oh, it's, it suppresses minority votes because they can't afford identification. The answer is IDs are free. However, the argument back is, well, but they have to produce a birth certificate and they have to spend money to go get it if they don't have it and so on, whatever. I don't know what the ins and outs of the issue are, but it was just interesting to me, at least, that a lower income country like the Dominican Republic, the poverty here, our poverty line in DR is way lower than what the poverty line is in the United States. And yet, IDs are required at the voting booth here. I feel like, US is doing this and DR is doing this. They're not at the same level yet, but the trends, man. Anyway, that was her experience. And by the way, the voter ID thing, that's my opinion. I don't speak for my wife on anything. At Savory1979 asks, so do you have any experience with other parts outside of Punta Cana? I have been researching Las Torenas 
and that seems more like my speed, kind of laid back beach life, just curious if you have visited. Yes, now do I have intimate knowledge of every aspect of the island? No, but here's where I spent some time. In Santo Domingo, we love Piantini. It's right downtown, great neighborhood. There's other neighborhoods there that I can't speak to, but I know there are great neighborhoods there that people should go check out as well. Atabacoa is amazing. It's a little bit more isolated. There's things building there. I know people that have lived there that moved to Punta Cana specifically because it got a little bit too rustic, we'll say. Not as much to do, not as many options. Las Terenas we've been to. It's amazing. My wife actually just got back from a girls weekend there. Here's my take on Las Terenas. I think it is a future spot to definitely invest in. I think in 10 years, we're gonna be looking at it like, holy crap. I think the airport up in Samana will grow. They have like one flight a day right now. It'll get bigger. Overall, the Samana Peninsula, whether you love it or not, will get developed. It just is gonna happen where it can be. But Las Torenas is a great spot. There's a beautiful school there, an amazing international school there. There is a hospital there. The beaches are insane. The community vibe is awesome. It's, it's, it's awesome. I definitely recommend investing. There's a couple of things to know. One, pricing is already kind of high. It's getting up there already. Las Torenas is not cheap. Not like it was or not like you might think it is when you hear pricing in Punta Cana. They're not much different, to be honest with you. And second, Las Torenas is a bit isolated for us having a family. If it was just me and my wife, no biggie. But one hospital, if it gets overrun, we need, we need more options than that for, for, to feel safe with our family. And for me, I need access to an airport for travel for my businesses, and even just if my family needs to get out, we want to be close to something. Las Torenas is over the mountains, kind of all the way in. It gets a lot of rain there, I think, too. So there's probably more flooding. Beautiful spot, more isolated. Just be mindful that there's not as many amenities or multiples of amenities as there are in a Santiago, Santo Domingo, Punta Cana, Puerto Plata. Now, for my money, where we almost considered going for at least a six-month stint just to go was going to be Cabarete. The reason is it's close to Puerto Plata, which has everything and then some. It's close to Sosua, which has everything and then some too know what i'm saying but no seriously it has a super pola it has uh, another grocery store across the street where i went in to get lemons once and my wife yelled at me because i got yellow lemons and she calls everything lemons yellow and green and green apparently are real lemons and yellow is not a lemon so i got yelled at for the 87,000th time in my 14 year marriage <sighs> But they have that grocery store too. And Cabarete is just an amazing town. There's a great expat community there too. And tons of great restaurants and things to do. Kite Beach, amazing. That's what I would say as you're looking around. Way cheaper to live on the North Shore than it is in, say, Punta Cana or neighborhoods in Santo Domingo. Way cheaper in Santiago because it's not close to a beach. Those are the places I would recommend. And that's my knowledge on Las Terenas. But this is a community. If somebody has more knowledge on it, please drop it below. Help out Savory1979 with this question because you may know a lot more about Las Terenas specifically than I do. But Savory, same thing. If you need a realtor to help you there, just go down, click the link, fill it out, and I'll help you with that. Question from Elaudis Mendez, 3161. Great video with lots of information. That was a, another video, not this one. My next question is, can you pay whatever debt you have in the US from the DR? How is the banking system there when it comes to paying outside of DR? I'm Dominican living in New Jersey. Already know the basics of banking in DR, but clueless about how it works to pay outside of the country. Here's what we do. The first year plus that we were here, we did not have a local bank account. We simply had a Bank of America account in the United States, which we still do to this day, and everything we did was paid out of that. When we paid our landlord, we just wired him the money. It cost 30, 35 bucks a month, whatever. We'd go to an ATM at Scotiabank because they have a, an agreement with Bank of America, so the fees aren't quite as high. Banco Lopez for a while was charging no fees at their ATM. You'd still have to pay your Bank of America fees. I don't think they're doing that anymore. But we just simply banked with our US bank account. If you're saying you wanna move everything down here, honestly, in the Scotiabank app, from what I remember, we have a bill pay option. So as long as you can embed the account information, you should be good. But if not, honestly, keep banking in the US. It's really easy to live here without needing to have a bank account here. It's really easy to live here, period. So I would say, I don't want you to overthink this. You can pay your debts with a US account. You could probably pay them out of your US dollar Dominican account. And it might be easier with a Scotiabank or maybe a Banco Lopez, which are larger, Scotiabank being international, than a Ban Reservist, but I don't know. Again, somebody that has an account down here and pays their bills in the US in any way, drop it down below. But there are plenty of people here, including good friends of ours, who just say, hey, I got my Amex, my City card, and my Chase card. That's banking in DR. They're all American accounts. One gets hacked, I got two others, until the third one gets shipped back in. At Jacqueline Colazzo 8868 asks, hi, new sub. Thank you, Jacqueline. By the way, subscribe if you haven't already. How do you do the immigration thing? Do you have a dual citizenship or do you pay a penalty every time you come back to the USA? I don't currently have dual citizenship. My wife does, my kids do. I'm working on it. On these videos, if you've watched me for a while, I keep saying that and all that means is I have to go and 
take care of the fingerprinting in Santo Domingo. I just never think to do it. It's never a priority, but I do want to have a second passport for many more reasons than just simply being in the Dominican. And with it being an easy way to get it because I'm married to a Dominican, this is the passport I want. But here's how it works for me. You can stay visa-free, just on passport as long as you want here in the Dominican Republic from countries like Canada, the United States, and most European nations, even Asian countries, I believe. When you leave, whether wherever you go, when you exit the airport, you go right to a sign. There's one, in fact, hopefully I have it. My editor can drop it in here. There's a sign that shows you how much you'll pay depending on how long you've been here. So if you stay over 30 days, but less than 90, which I do often, it's something like $60 that you pay per person at the airport. If you stay over 90, 90 days, it goes higher and so on and so forth. It goes all the way up to if you're here 10 years, and I know a guy that's been here like 20 and hasn't left, he's Canadian, just loves being here and never leaves. He would pay something like 17, 1800 US dollars if he left today. Probably more because every year after 10 years is an additional 9,000 pesos. That's like 200 bucks, I think. So if you're here 20 years, it would be like 1,700 plus 200 times 10, $3,700 to leave. So it can add up if you never leave. I go back to the US for different business things and events. So there's sometimes when I don't pay anything because I'm gone at least twice within the 30 day period. But most of the time I'm paying the 60 bucks when I leave. Getting a DR passport would make it easier for sure. But there is one thing that becomes harder. Know this, if you're a parent traveling alone with your kids on a Dominican passport out of the country, you will be required to get a notarized legal letter from the other parent saying, yes, I realize that this parent is leaving the country with these two kids. I know a lot of parents who have both citizenships and if they have to travel alone with their kids, they just use their US passport and pay the fine or tax rather than deal with having to get the letter notarized legal and present that at the airport and all of that stuff. It's not worth it to them. So a little tip for those of you who might travel alone with your kids on a Dominican passport in the future. At Johan Castillo 6024 asks, how much is the gym membership over there? How much is the housekeeping services? Also, do you hire your housekeeper direct or through an agency? I heard after three months, you need to provide benefits to your employees. Is that true or depends on the amount of employees? Get five for one in this one, Johan. Let's hit them all. Gym membership. I think we're paying about $60 per month for each of us, but we prepaid a year. So it's a little bit less per month than if you just pay month to month. Our gym is the Body Shop Studio in downtown Mall Punta Cana. We were at a Gold's Gym in Veron. That was about $40 per person per month. A little grittier, not quite as nice. Didn't have all the classes we wanted and that sort of stuff. So we paid more. Housekeeping. It really ranges. Some people tell us we're overpaying. Some people say, you know, oh, you're resetting the market. I really don't care. We pay our housekeeper about $500 a month for Monday through Friday, 40 hours a week worth of work. We pay her that because she's excellent and she's also our babysitter. When we're not there, she watches our kids. We fully trust her. We also pay for her transportation. And when needed, we help her out with certain things like medical bills and medical expenses. But most of the time I hear three, three fifty, four hundred dollars per month full time is probably good. But again, for those of you who are going to say, oh, it's way too much. I wonder if you've lived here because I think prices have gone up. Everyone says, oh, you move in there, drives prices up. Yeah, for me too. We have to pay our housekeeper more to keep a good one. As far as hiring the housekeeper, we hired ours through our Airbnb host. Here's a little hack. When we moved here, we went to Capcana for two months in an Airbnb and we asked the, the host to provide us with a cleaning lady. That cleaning lady became our permanent cleaning lady. Now we've since moved on from her and we did pay her a severance in accordance with the laws that are here. But that cleaning lady introduced us to another lady who was actually just working with us weekends. She's now our full time and she is awesome. We're doing everything we can to help her and check this out for those who say, ah, oh, it's slave wages or whatever. This lady on 500 a month is building a six unit apartment building. Way better budgeter than I am. I've learned not to patronize people here after the last year. I don't feel bad for them. I want them to make more. We want to provide value. But people here don't deserve your pity. This is my take. They deserve your respect. I'll leave it there. Honestly, the best thing you can do if you move into a neighborhood is go to the neighbors, ask them if their cleaning ladies can recommend a cleaning lady. That's the best system we've had so far. You might go through a couple before you have the one you want, but there you go. As far as providing benefits, I don't know that you have to provide like, like healthcare benefits. Maybe in some industries you do. Not for cleaning ladies. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Drop it down below. We actually do take care of that for hours, but I don't know if we're doing that by law or just because we want to. But you you do owe certain bonuses and severances at a certain point. At like Christmas month, we pay double. That's by law. We pay double the rate for our cleaning lady like a Christmas bonus. And that's for the whole month of December, the rate for the whole month of December. At David Williams RK1NG. Hi, Jamie. How much does a new car cost in the DR? A lot. This is why people ship cars here. And if you have a cedula, you can actually ship a car here one time tax free. For those that want to know how to do this, the best recommendations I can give you are to call a courier service, Google it or call a dealership down here that's large and is licensed in both the US and DR and they can help you with that. You can 
pay them to handle the shipping. The car has to be a certain age, there's certain stipulations, but talk to them. But a car here, I would say, I've seen anywhere from 30 to 100% more in some cases than a car in the United States. Now here's the question that comes up, like, how's that possible if they don't make a lot of money there? This is where people need to listen more to me. There is way more wealth here than you realize. And let me double down. A lot of that wealth is Dominican people. It's not this like, oh, a bunch of white people moving there, Americans or whatever. Nah, in fact, we'll get to that in just a minute. How many are truly foreign here? There's a lot of money that Dominican people have here and they do it legitimately. They own businesses. They're high end in the hotels. I know Dominicans making hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales at the hotels. There's a lot of wealth here, more than most people want to give it credit for. It's almost the best kept secret for Dominicans in the United States who want to look at this place as some poor, destitute country. Uh -uh. There's poverty, not denying that. There's crime, not denying that. But there's a hell of a lot of wealth here, a hell of a lot of money here as well. For whatever it's worth, we paid $8,000 for our 2012 station wagon to a neighbor who was leaving the country and needed to move. So we got maybe a little bit of a deal, probably could have paid 10, but that's a 12 year old vehicle. So context. At JP-YU9IE, are you worried that grandparents are getting old and that you are not close enough to them? No, and I think this, uh, this person, if you're Dominican, I get that. Dominicans are much more family-centric as far as I owe my parents. I've noticed that in my wife's family. The kids take care of the parents. There's an obligation there, which I think is amazing, by the way. But I'm saying this just matter-of-factly. Like, if you're Dominican, then leaving the grandparents is almost like, like abandoning them. American culture, being all American, is I raise my kids for them to go and be and do what they have to do. So I haven't lived near my parents since like 19. Would it be nice to be closer to family? Yes. And when we think about one day, if whatever, we move back to the United States, truthfully, we think about going closer to my Dominican family, my wife's family. I mean, I love my family, but there's more of a community where my wife's family is. And probably a little bit more to do with that cultural connection that people have that are Dominican to their parents. But look, here's my take on this. I can give my kids an incredible experience, wide in perspective, and another language skill. There's a sacrifice that comes with that might be one of them. Never said it's easy, but that's a sacrifice. At Dom, FS80M, love your vids. You bring a good perspective to my country. Why was it that you quit your job in the US? Did you choose the DR in order to maintain the lifestyle you had in Michigan? I like those two questions. I quit my job because it wasn't serving me anymore. It became overwhelmingly soul sucking. And I had built a side hustle, a business, and the first real estate, and then later as a personal brand and podcaster that made me confident enough to take the leap and try it. I wasn't making a lot of money when I did. I saved some money. I had a belief in what I could do, and I made the leap. I was making 400 grand a year with that and went all in on me and my personal brand and my real estate portfolio. I've sold a lot of my real estate portfolio actively. I still invest passively, but my income is derived from being a brand. And honestly, this platform, I love creating. This is so much fun. YouTube pays me for ads at some point. They're not doing it yet, or not much anyway, but this would be amazing. If I just, just get paid to share with all of you what's going on on YouTube, like I didn't know that existed until I left my job. It wasn't the original plan, but I'm trending in that direction. As far as choosing DR to maintain lifestyle, it's interesting. My lifestyle is better. My costs are also double. Not every month, but many months I'm paying twice the US rate that I was paying. Here's what I mean. My mortgage in the United States, two grand a month. My rent here, four. My electric bill and heat bill in the United States, $300, $350. My electric bill here, six, six fifty. This is Punta Cana Village, Cap Cana. I'm not lying. Some people are going to say I'm crazy. Somebody down below, drop a comment and prove it. Electric here is ridiculous. Didn't expect it. Gas was $3 a gallon. It's six here. Cost of food is generally the same. Some imported American brands we pay more for. Car insurance is less, but labor is less. So having a lady work for us full-time for 500 and then another one that works on weekends for us for 200 a month to do our laundry, our cooking, our cleaning, freaking amazing. So lifestyle better, costs more. I say double because I'm quoting those few things. It's probably more like 60, 70% more. And to be honest, when we moved here, we moved here for a year. So there's a little bit of like, screw it, blow it out. Let's just get a house and be. But then we stayed and we stayed on one year blow it out prices. So we are looking at ways to mitigate our cost right now, which might include getting out of the current house we're in and renting something different or buying, which we're looking at. But lifestyle, better, weather, people, culture, safety, schools, cost more. At the Leomuni. I hope I said that right. What would you say is the percentage breakdown of locals versus foreigners in the Punta Cana Village community? I'll take that to Punta Cana and to the country generally. Punta Cana Village is a high-end neighborhood. Cost to buy there is six plus, 600,000 plus, easy. Foreigners, I sometimes find that that term is synonymous with like Americans or white people sometimes, not many. In fact, 
very few. Foreigners generally, I'd say 20 to 30% altogether are foreigners. That means Venezuelan, Colombian, Ecuadorian, American, European, Russian, and so on. 60, 70% is Dominican and or Dominican owned. Meaning even if there are Americans or foreigners there, they're paying rent to Dominican owners. It's still DR. I know there's a narrative out there like, oh, you're in Punta Cana, not really the DR. It's bullshit, first of all. And it's an easy talking point. It would be like me saying, you live in Manhattan, that's not the United States. It's stupid. I understand that it is a more developed, more unique part of Dominican Republic, at least recently, but more of the Dominican is trending toward what Punta Cana is than the other way around. That's facts. That's actually a really good point. I've never thought to say before, but more of DR is going toward Punta Cana and what it is developed, good roads, great infrastructure, schools, all of that, than going the other way. But I would say in Punta Cana village, 70, 30, Dominican, 30%, a mix of everything. Now in Punta Cana, generally, it's a good chunk of Haitians. Outside of that, kind of a little bit of everything. I would say if you take the Haitian population out, it's Dominican, and then there's a sliver, 10, 15, 20% maybe of everything else. Now look, there are people that come here for some months of the year, retirees that come here for the winter, that sort of thing. But like living and actually being here all the time, small percentage. Here's some stats for you. There are 300,000 US citizens living in the Dominican Republic. The overwhelming majority of those US citizens are Dominican. And that's my experience. The Dominicans that I know in my neighborhood, many of them have lived in the US, Canada, Europe. They have ties elsewhere. They've been educated in the US or something. So culturally, it feels a little bit more Western here, but Dominicans live here. They're a little higher on the socioeconomic ladder, a little bit more educated perhaps. There's more wealth, but still Dominican. You wanna know how many people live here from different countries of origin? Check out this chart. Now this is of 2020, but let's kind of go with it being the most recent, but of the 600-ish thousand people that are originated from other countries, almost 500,000 of that are Haitians. I don't know if that number is higher or lower with all the immigration stuff that's been happening recently, but still it's mostly Haitian. But look at the next, Venezuela, 34,000. That's probably more today. United States, 14,000. So there you go. If you kind of do the math on this, 300,000 US citizens live here, 14,000, the U.S. is their country of origin. Then it goes to Spain, Puerto Rico, Italy, China, France, so on and so forth. This narrative on colonization or people moving here to take over the country, it's not true. The narrative on prices going up is true, but that's mostly Dominicans with money moving back here to their homeland or their family's homeland, not random American in Iowa picking up and leaving for the DR. That's my AMA Friday for this week. I hope it helped all of you. Let me know what you think. Drop it below. Be sure to subscribe. Third time I've asked, please do. It just helps me grow the channel, create more for you, and I'll see you on the next one.